Yo, what is up guys and welcome to another episode of Becoming a Wild Drift Expert. I am your host, my name is Christian, also known as Hell's Devil, and today we're going to be looking at a very special game because this is in the Korean server between RY, also known as Rollster Y, up against T1. These are known to be the two best teams in Korea and the reason that I picked this game especially is because like if you look at the draft which was shown in the beginning of the video you can see that traditional ADCs are being picked and this is what I want to put highlights on because if we look at NA and if we look at Europe you know two very strong regions a lot of players and a lot of teams like to put a lot of emphasis on the uh, top laners on the junglers and on the mid laners and then you know supports are often these roaming supports like the Galio and like the Rakan for example but if we're looking at these two teams in particular in Korea and let me tell you both these teams are absolutely incredible um, they have Luna Luna is a very known player in this scene he loves to play those 80 carries right like he loves to play it but even the casters during the draft when Lux was picked they said all right it's a Lux in the dragon lane but no Rollster Y has a whole different playstyle and we're going to be dissecting this playstyle entirely during this gameplay so um as you can see our ry did pick up the vein and this is not a very known pick in you know this is not a very known pick in esports especially up against the composition of t1 because if you look at that composition they actually do have counters against the vein like they have the akali they have the lulu and they have the Corky. these are all champions that do pretty well into the vein right like if you look into the composition of t1 however we see the corky in the dragon lane. this is a bit more of what we can expect right from these pro teams to pick the likes of a corky or the morgana or the ziggs or the oriana etc etc in the dragon lane right like the way that teams play is they kind of do like a weak side to dragon lane as in you just play it safe and get to the late game and then the top lane and the mid lane are gonna carry but no ry doesn't do that guys ry doesn't do that at all you will see how they do it and as i said like this is not only going to be a good day for the view good game for the viewers to watch perhaps also for the coaches in na and europe to see like how these korean teams play as well in a different fashion than Europe. Because if we look at Europe, for example, I have seen a lot of European games. You know, players like Doom and Joey Skex, especially. I want to highlight these two players, especially, because I know how good they are at the 80 carries. But they play a lot of these mages in the dragon lane because it works. But these types of players and these types of teams need to watch teams like RY play the game because RY is undefeated. Up until now, they were up 6 0 and already qualified for the play in. So, yeah, I also want to put some highlights on uh, Salem, on the Nami, because this guy can play it all, right? The, the, the RY team really has a lot of champions and playstuffs up their sleeves, because Luna plays the ability power carries as well. He can play both of it. So having that, like, you know, that diversity in your team that RY has makes it an incredibly hard team to play against not only in game but also in the draft right like and this is also a good thing for you solo players out there if you want to play solo queue you have to have a lot of different champions and play styles up your arsenal so what i mean with that is you have to if you play baron lane for example you have to know how to split push you have to know how to play team fighting champions you have to know how to play tanks and you have to know how to play solo carries if you play in the dragon lane you have to know how to play the dragon laners you know the early game carries the late game carries the mages like it just always helps you to play a lot of different kinds of champions and oh yeah have an amazing gang coming through from Doe from RY, but unfortunately, it just, it just doesn't work against Jong. And Jong didn't even have to waste a flash right there, guys. As you can see, ganking an Akali like that is incredibly hard because all Jong did is just use his ultimate to escape. And Doe on the Lee Sin unfortunately wasted his flash and his ultimate before a very important objective. And so let's just pause the video right here and look at the compositions. So if we just look at the site of RY and at the site of T1 right now. I want to ask you guys to test your knowledge. What should RY do when the next objective spawns? So what should the side of RY do against the side of T1 when the next Dragon or Rift Herald spawns? Look at the compositions, test your knowledge, put it in the comments, pause the video right now because I'm going to be revealing the answer in a few minutes. All right, so the answer is, and this is like a pretty much a 100% guaranteed answer, if you looked at how much gold T1 has, which is 1000 gold more, if you looked at the composition of T1, which is a Corky and an Olaf, and then if you looked at Lee Do on the Lee Sin, who has already wasted his ultimate and a flash, you would have said very easily, 
RY is not gonna fight for an objective. RY is gonna try to shake hands or they're gonna try to like take a tower or something. They should never fight for this dragon. It just really doesn't make any sense with that composition to fight for the dragon. And like, this is a lesson that I, I, I am constantly gonna be giving this to you guys. And I'm constantly giving this to my viewers on my YouTube channel as well. You don't have to contest objectives. You don't have to contest objectives i'm gonna repeat it one more time you do not have to contest objectives as you can see guys what ry is doing they don't care at all about the dragon you see what they're doing they do not care at all and this is a very obvious move right like i'm i'm a challenger player in this game grandmaster challenger i know these types of things and i've seen a lot of competitive games i know how to play around this so what ry is doing here they're not only taking the rift herald they're not only taking the first tower, they are also getting a free kill on the top side of the map. And here you can see it, BDG on the Corky now does get the kill with his package, but this is this is really good for RY. They were able to compromise by taking the Rift Herald, taking a turret and getting a kill. And as you can see, they're actually ahead in gold, guys. They are ahead in gold. And not only that, not only that, Lee Sin, though on the Lee Sin, still has a Rift Herald up his sleeve. So this is an absolutely massive win by RY, perfectly played macro-wise. And, you know, they understand we have the Vayne, you know, we, we don't have the Lee Sin ultimate. We're up against the Corky. We don't have to fight for this dragon. Who cares if you lose a dragon? And especially in this new patch, if you didn't know already, every single dragon across the board has become weaker. In the recent patch, Riot nerfed every dragon. They nerfed all that engaged by Lux though. Oh my god, what an amazing engage. And they get the kill. Luna goes in with his ultimate. But let me continue talking about the dragons. They took away 1% of the powers from each dragon. So instead of the Infernal granting you a 6% damage buff, it now grants you a 5% buff. And then the Mountain drops by 1% too. Cloud Dragon drops by 1% too. Every single dragon, right? So basically dragons are just not not that strong anymore so that's what makes the play from ry even better like this was already the right play to make with their composition but it now makes it even better just because dragons are perhaps a bit work no they are a bit weaker all right so if we look at this game here we look into the replay because oh my god xero with that flash combo on the lux was absolutely amazing and here you know that was really well by luna it's worth to trade your death and that's the thing that i like to say when you play these late game heavy champions you know when you play a vein when you play a nasus when you play a kill Tristana etc etc what I mean is when you play a late game champion it is pretty much always worth to trade kills or basically to trade gold and experience like if you can deny the enemy or sorry if you can get a lot of golden experience from the enemy it is worth it if you give it to them as well because if you for example have a vein up against a bit of a weaker late game champion as a vein, of course, you will outskill in the late game. So what happens if both of you get the same amount of gold, you know, if you kill the enemy and if the enemy kills you back as well, you will get to that moment of the late game faster and faster and faster instead of being stuck at that low amount of gold where Vayne is practically useless. And that is why you saw Luna not even hesitate to go for that kill. He went for it knowing that he would very likely die up against Jay, Jay I, uh, on that Olaf. He still went for it because he knows, guys. He knows that if he reaches the late game, it's well, it's not game over, but you know, he's, he's gonna be a vein in the late game, and that's unbelievably dangerous. So, right here, RY is placing the Rift Heart in the middle, uh, in the bottom lane but it's not all of them pushing the bottom lane and this is what i really like about ry you know t1 is doing a decent job defending it you know they defend the turret but what ry is doing is they're applying pressure on every single side of the map as you can see rattle on the set didn't try didn't compromise he didn't even allow the enemy to take the top lane turret because what what ry could have done is like if we look into the replay i'll actually exactly explain to you what they could have done so as we look into this replay, this is exactly when RY dropped the Rift Herald. What they could have done is put the Set and the Lux in the mid lane and, you know, push a mid lane turret. Or they could have applied a lot of pressure and pushed a bot lane turret. But instead, they're actually defending the top lane turret. And the reason that they're doing this is because they don't want to compromise. They don't want to give any gold and experience over to T1. So they're not even giving away the top lane turret. And they know that with their composition, they do have a decent amount of pressure. And as you can see right now, Rattau on the set is pushing the top lane, which means a wave is 
is going to crash into their turret, which means they're going to lose a lot of gold. And someone has to go up there. So just TRY doing a decent job. Although the Rift Herald did feel quite wasted. I don't really like it when teams put the Rift Herald in the bot lane. You know, they made a mistake, but they picked back up on it, right? Like they didn't allow T1 to take a turret out of it, but it's a whatever, right? Like what they could have, what they should have done better is actually push the mid lane turret. But the reason that they pushed the bot lane tower is because the timer was running out for Doe, right? Like he's playing the Lee Sin. He took the previous Rift Herald. The timer was unfortunately running out and that's why they desperately put it in a bot lane. So even though it didn't really make sense, that is why he basically had to. And this one makes a bit more sense, as you can see. Pushing the mid lane. So RY knows that T1 wants to get this dragon. So they're basically saying, you take the dragon, we take the turret. And they may even go for more, as you can see. The Rift Herald is going to be getting two charges off yet again. T1 just has very one-dimensional gameplay right here, as you can see. That, that you know They're just going for the dragons, allowing Luna to scale into the late game. And right here, T1 is trying to look for a fight, but... Ooh, RY barely getting out. And this is the moment where T1 is still pretty strong, but a beautiful ultimate by Luna, or by, no, sorry, by Zero on the Lux, actually able to fight that stronger early game composition of T1. You can already see, like, RY is doing decently against this composition of T1, which RY outskills, guys, because Olaf in the late game is not that strong. Even though T1 has drafted Lulu with an Olaf, this basically makes Olaf a late game threat as well. But when you're up against that Vayne and up against that Nami, the late game is hard guys. Like the late game is going to be really hard to play because RY just has so much upfront damage. They, you know, Luna on that Vayne doesn't care about any tankiness because she has true damage. The, the Vayne has true damage and that's the beauty of the champion. And as you can see what he's doing here, he's farming his wave while taking the jungle camps as well. And unfortunately, he missed that one minion, which is really not worth it for him. But you can see he's just really funneling as much gold as he can onto himself. You know, to get ahead in the game as hard as he can. So, as you can see, even though he's farming so well, he's still behind on BDG on that Corky because Corky ha nearly has 8,000 gold and Luna is sitting on 7.7k gold. But yet again, this is fine. You have to understand, this is fine when you play Vayne because look at that damage, guys. You see what I mean? This is only this is only a two-item Vayne. Can you, uh, like, do you understand how hard a late-game Vayne is going to hit? A late-game Vayne is going to hit so hard it's, it's unbelievable and he's already caught up on gold because they pushed that turret so now the top that leaves the top lane open and you can clearly see t1 sees that as well so they're putting jong on the top lane he's gonna try to push a turret because now it's open right like five people of ry are in the mid lane so let's see what t1 actually decides to do they could be pressuring the top lane which i assume they're gonna do right like jong on the akali he could just push the wave crash it under the turret and now all of t1 are right there they could just push this turret ry is not gonna give them an easy time to do so however so as you can see ry is applying a lot of pressure here Ooh, though taking some damage but zero on that lux guy zero is just <laughs> doing an absolutely unbelievable job on the lux lux is oh salem just gets caught he dives under the turret though saving himself oh they dive the turret t1 is going for the big dive it's very risky to do especially up against the set and rato on that set being able to kill jong off right there oh no t1 goes for the turret dive when they shouldn't have and now it's an absolutely disastrous turret dive because ry kills them all off and only J jy goes out of it he's gonna try to push the mid lane but no 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 so let's take a look at the replay and see what the hell happened right there Alright, so onto the replay and oi oi oi, what the hell happened right there? T1 should not have done that. They should not have dived that turret. So as you can see, they thought that they caught Salem for free. So Jong used his Akali ultimate and he didn't want to waste it. So he dived in, followed up by the Galio ultimate, but they forgot that Nami can waste a lot of time with her bubbles. And then Ratao comes in with his ultimate, guys. And then you know how Vayne works, right? Like if Vayne doesn't get touched, she's going to kill everyone with that ultimate. Vayne gets a lot of bonus movement speed, especially when she uses her ultimate. When she moves towards enemies, she gets 90 bonus movement speed, which essentially allows her to catch up to anyone so if you don't kill the vein during that dive you may as well just not dive because even if they killed Salem right there even if t1 killed Salem right there it would not have been enough guys it would just not have been enough so now this is a massive win for ry and as you can see even though ry is behind two dragons the game is starting to look very desperate for T1 already. Like, that is what I'm trying to say, right? Like, the dragons are just not worth that much. And as you look into this replay again, like, I want to show you guys, even if T1 killed Salem on the Nami, it would not have done anything. Because, as you can see, he already landed his CC. 
But after that, it would have been over anyways, because Doe is coming in with the Lee Sin, saving his team, and then you have Luna on the vein, just finishing off everyone. This would have happened regardless of, of how T1 dived it, because as you can see, Zero was full HP, 2 on the Lux. It was just, it was just not a good dive, guys. So let's take a look at the builds and everything like that, right? Like Lux, uh, Zero has two items right now. Luna has three items. And interestingly, Luna decided to go for the Divine Sunderer on Vayne. Hmm. I don't like it personally, but I can see why. He's up against a bit of a tanky frontline, you know, the Galio and the Olaf, and it's going to allow him to heal up. Although you have to understand, uh, he, uh, Luna already has a lot of healing from his second ability, from the Blade of the Rune King, from the Wits Ant, and from Nami, which makes him prone to some anti-healing. And as you can see right here, a beautiful engage from the Olaf, and it's actually enough to kill Luna right here. You can see T1 now having a good engage. Gratel doing a beautiful job frontlining on the set, however. But that was a, that was a pretty well-fought fight by T1. And they even kill Zero on Deluxe. This is it. This is what I mean. If you can catch out the vein, you just win the fight. And if you don't catch out the vein... Oh, what an amazing re-engage by Doe. But unfortunately, it's just not quite enough. And an ace for T1. And as you can see, they just... Wow, unbelievably, this is this is what they should have done throughout this entire game. Kill out the vein and then fight. And as we look into this replay, let's just take a look at what happened to Luna. As you can see, Olaf found Luna right there on the vein. And then he just rolls into in the middle of all of them. And it's just over. You can't survive that. A beautiful re-engage from Rattel on the set, by the way. But it was just too late because it just won't work. And if we look here, by the way, no time to look at the replay. Because T1 is trying to get this dragon, but Rattel has none of it. But they do get it anyways. And now this is a quite this is quite an important dragon right like i talked about dragons not being that important but when you take three dragons including the cloud dragon and including the infernal dragon it is important here we can see teleports coming through from everyone because ry is trying to rush down the baron which i don't like by the way because they're taking so much damage from the baron and a massive engage from jong keep in mind ry took a lot of damage from the baron and they've reduced their armors and magic resist from the baron and you can see they're struggling really hard against that composition of t1 so unbelievably so yet again ry loses the team fight and i know exactly why they lose the team fight Oi, 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 RY should not have started the Baron. And this is the problem. Like, teams just don't seem to understand what the Baron does. Because while RY was starting that Baron, every single second, they were losing armor and magic resist. And, like, not only they were taking damage, they were losing armor and magic resist as well. And now it's T1 taking the Baron, actually. So just some very, very well-played fights by T1, but also some very big mistakes by RY right there, and just really T1 perfectly capitalizing on it, right? Like, they realized, hey, RY is taking the Baron, we can re-engage in it, and Rattel is just, you know, and as we look into this replay here, you know, RY is taking the Baron, they're constantly losing armor and magic resist, losing armor and magic resist, losing, 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 and then Jong just fully engages, and then the Olaf as well, like, here it's basically over already. You've debuffed yourself massively by going for that Baron, and then RY is just selling up to lose this fight really like you, you don't want to be doing barons like this and even though they've done really well in this early game now the game is not starting to look as well for uh, ry anymore because t1 took three dragons you know and now they're going to be taking a lot of turrets as well which ry did by the way ry was winning the turret game and the reason that they were winning the turret game was because they took all of those Rift Heralds. But not anymore, guys. They're not going to be winning the turret game anymore because T1 picked up the Baron. And Armai just can't fight T1 anymore. And ooh, I love what Do on the Lee Sin is doing right here, guys. I absolutely love this, actually. Wow. He's pushing the mid lane. So they don't get Baron buffed minions to the mid lane. And now RY can put full focus on defending the top lane. Wow. No, that is amazing. It, it seems so straightforward and obvious, but I, I don't see people do that. Oh, he does it again. Look, he does it again. That is amazing. And because of, because of Doe doing that, you can see RY can very easily defend this turret. Like, you see they're just defending the turret because they don't have to defend the mid lane. Unbelievably good play by RY. I'm just so surprised to see this. Like, this is next level. And now it's them being on the upper end. And now it's them winning the team fight. And this is all because of Doe pushing those mid lane minions. Wow. Man. This is why Korea was in the finals in during the Horizon Cup. This is why, because this is just some next level gameplay. They just, they literally completely denied the Baron. Unbelievable.
Wow. No, but uh, <laughs> I find that amazing though. Just on the Lee Sin, completely denying the mid lane push right there. And T1 couldn't do anything about it because if they were if they would look for the Lee Sin, they, they, they just can't kill him. And now it's just game over. They have 10 seconds to finish the game and it should be game over because Core on the Galio is just not going to be able to defend this game, unfortunately. And he's desperately trying to defend it, but he can't. What an amazing upset here. Even though RY was the team to expect to win this game, I still call this an upset because they just did it all because of those push on the Baron. So that was it for the video. Thank you guys so much. I really hope you enjoyed this Korean esports game as well. Let us know in the comments what you want to see next. Make sure you give this video a like as well. And we will see you all in the next Wild Drift video. Bye-bye.